everybody, it's Dr. Karen. Wanted to take a couple seconds today and answer some or address some questions that I have gotten regarding social pragmatic intervention or social skills therapy. So I always get a lot of questions like, how do I take data when we're treating pragmatic language? Um, how do I get kids to make eye contact or act appropriately or teach those social behaviors? Um, what strategies will keep my students motivated? What's evidence-based practice? Where do I get good materials? All of those kinds of questions. And these are all good questions to be asking, and they're definitely things that we need to consider. However, at the starting point, um, they're actually the wrong questions to be asking because even though we have to do all of those things, there are a couple other things we need to do first and a couple other things we need to understand in order for those questions to even be relevant. So what happens is that when we start out with the right framework in therapy and have that clear understanding of where we're going, a lot of times the answers to those questions either, again, become irrelevant or they the answers become clear. And it's a lot easier for you to work through all of them because it becomes more obvious when you know where you're going. So in yesterday's video, I talked about the three essential components for social pragmatic intervention. So I wanted to just talk about the first one today. So let me give you the overview. So in order to answer all of those questions, in order to know how am I going to take data, where do I get my materials, or even what strategies that I do, uh, what you're going to want to know is the overall framework. So you want to understand the three essential components to social pragmatic intervention. So those three essential components are, number one, your roadmap that defines where you're going, that will show you where you should even be intervening for your students. Number two, explicit teaching. Um, and then number three, practice. So all of those things go together to help your students have effective social functioning. So in yesterday's video, and I can share that bef below in the comments, I talked about the whole thing, but I wanted to just dive into that first one today, just to give you kind of a, a snippet and really help your understanding of that first one, which is your roadmap. So here's the thing about social skills intervention and why your students are struggling in the first place. So. The thing is, is that a lot of times those students are struggling with social skills because they haven't picked up on the rules, which is often referred to as the hidden curriculum. So that means that, yes, we have a, an explicit curriculum at school, like actual academic curriculum. That's where we often think of, or what we often think of when we're thinking of that word. But there is actually a curriculum for how we should act in certain situations, how we should interact act with others, the expectations that people might have in social situations, depending on what those situations are, because obviously we know they vary based on where you are. For example, being at work is a lot different than hanging out with your friends in your living room, things like that. And we call it the hidden curriculum because it's not something that is typically directly taught to all of us. We just kind of figure it out. Well, we know that our students, if they're struggling with pragmatic language, then they haven't just figured it out. Now, the thing is, is that most of us, if we don't have social cognitive challenges, then a lot of us can function pretty well, or at least well enough in social situations. And you would think that someone who has those abilities would be able to teach someone else who doesn't, especially us, um, SLPs, um, practitioners who are working with this, these populations, you'd think that we have a background in communication disorders. You would think we'd know what skills to teach them, but the problem is, is that's not always the case. And because of that, sometimes our treatment is a little bit off. And then that causes us to not get the right results because a lot of times we're not picking the right skills to work on and we're not picking the right materials. And so, of course, the data we're collecting is irrelevant. If you're not targeting the right area, it doesn't matter if you have an evidence-based intervention, if it's not the right evidence-based intervention. So you'd think that we would know how to do that implicitly, but the thing is, is that we don't. And that's because socialization comes so naturally to a lot of us that, and it's so easy, and it's, it's automatic. Again, it's implicit. We don't even think about it. And it's almost, we do it at a subconscious level without even realizing it. 
And we've gotten so good at it that we don't know how to explicitly think about those skills. And that's why we might not always understand which skills our students are struggling with. And so what we end up doing is that we will have some maybe kind of generic goal for improving social skills or even we might have something specific there like eye contact or conversation or whatever. But the problem is because we haven't taken the time to diagnose the situation and really think about why our student is struggling, we don't actually know what skill we're targeting. So for example, if a student goes into the cafeteria and they get in a fight with a peer or with a staff member, or if they uh, can't find somebody to sit with, there's a lot of different pieces or discrete skills that are required to be able to do that effectively. And so if we don't know that, how are we going to know what to work on? And, and then the thing is, is that what we do is often we will try to teach some kind of behavior, but if we don't link that up to the impairment, then we're just kind of preaching what they should be doing without actually addressing that one little deficit behavior or that one little deficit area that is causing them from being able to do the behavior in the first place. So the way that we actually do that is, is number one, we need a roadmap ourselves to actually be able to navigate those inner, those interventions. Just because we can interact socially um, and be a, meet the expectations of the situation and function pretty well, doesn't mean that we're gonna be able to diagnose the situation for our clients because we can't, we might not be seeing the world through their eyes, through their lens. So we've gotta be able to piece apart what skills are they're, they're actually needing to do in order to function. That's why we need a roadmap and the way that we design that roadmap and our starting point with our total intervention protocol for pragmatic language needs to start with those six categories of social impairment. What that does is it breaks it down so it's easier for you to pick apart and figure out, okay, which one of these things, or often multiple things, um, is my student struggling with so that I actually know what skills to teach them in order to make them do these behaviors that are the end goal. So a lot of times what we end up doing is just kind of throwing them into those situations or doing these role plays, whether it be in our therapy or outside of therapy, um, but we're not actually giving them the skills that they need to do those behaviors. We're kind of putting the cart before the, the horse and almost throwing them into the deep end without teaching them how to swim. So the six categories of social impairment are as follows. Number one, nonverbal behaviors. So again, things like tone of voice, body language, even eye contact falls in here. A lot of times when people work on eye contact, it's really more of an issue of nonverbal communication. And we've just honed in on one of these discrete skills. And so we're not working on the entire class. That's the, the entire class of behaviors. And so that's why we might, when we just pick one little discrete skill and don't see how it fits in the whole framework, then it can be difficult to help our students actually do it and do it in a way that is um, functional for them, but also in a way that works across social situations. So number one is nonverbal behaviors. And then we also have social initiation. So being able to initiate interactions with other people, reciprocity and terminating interactions. So once we interact with somebody and get their attention, then we need to be able to maintain that interaction appropriately and also know how to end it appropriately instead of just awkwardly walking away. So we need to be able to do that as well. And then we also have social cognition. So let me review what we have so far. Nonverbal behaviors, social initiation, reciprocity and terminating interactions, and social cognition. So in order to be able to actually behave in a way that is functional in a social situation, we need to have the cognitive abilities to do so, meaning that we, we have to have the knowledge of that social situation, be able to recognize it, be able to know what behaviors actually would be appropriate in that situation. So we've got to have those social cognitive skills as well. So that's number four. Number five is self-awareness and perspective taking. So in order to be able to engage appropriately, we need to be aware of what we're doing 
and how other people are responding. So we've got to be aware of ourselves and then how it impacts others and how others might be perceiving what we're doing. So we've got to be able to monitor that as well. Perfect example, if somebody has social cognitive skills, they might know what they're supposed to do in a certain situation, but then they can't monitor themselves and have the self-awareness within the situation, they're not going to be successful. So if we're addressing just social cognition and not self-awareness and perspective taking, they're not gonna succeed. And we might just be working on this same thing over here uh, where they're already okay, and then we're not addressing this other thing that's gonna get them over the hump. So um, that was number five, is self-awareness and perspective taking. And then finally, we have social anxiety and withdrawal. This is key here because it can dispel a lot of the myths that we have about people who struggle with social skills, which is that they don't care, they don't want to have friends, they're not interested in relationships and things like that. A lot of times, they are simply avoiding a situation that is painful for them or that has been repeatedly unsuccessful we don't like to do things that we're not good at. We don't like to do things that are scary or uncomfortable, and we don't like to fail. And if you failed repeatedly at a certain situation, or if you perceive that you're failing, whether you are or not, a lot of times we tend to avoid it, and we tend to be very anxious in that situation, which then when we're anxious, it causes our performance in that situation to go down. And so it's kind of a self-fulfilling process a self-fulfilling prophecy and this endless uh, feedback loop where we're anxious and then we're kind of just reconfirming our beliefs that we're not good at that situation, which only causes more anxiety and causes us to withdraw more. So because of that, a lot of times these students aren't getting practice in those skills or and um, and we we again perceive it as apathy or defiance. Oftentimes it's it's a deeper problem. So we've got to understand all of these things. We've got to be able to figure out which one of these things, and oftentimes it's multiple uh, of these things, that our students are struggling with. If we don't understand this, it doesn't matter if you have an evidence-based practice. It doesn't matter if you have materials from this curriculum or that curriculum. It's got to line up with what your student needs. And the thing is, is that these things might come so naturally to us that we might not be able to identify and piece and pick apart what our students are actually struggling with. So this is what starts to form that framework for helping our students so that we can start lining those things up and picking the actual strategies. So let me review those one more time because I know I went through them pretty fast. We've got nonverbal behaviors, social initiation, reciprocity and terminating interactions, social cognition, self-awareness and perspective taking, and social anxiety and withdrawal. So you've got to use these things as your diagnostic framework that's going to guide you in figuring out where do I even start and why are my students struggling? Why aren't they doing these behaviors that I've taught them to do over and over again? All of those things. And those questions I started at at the beginning, like how do I take data, how do I pick materials and strategies, well, a lot of those questions become a lot more apparent, um, or the answers to those questions become a lot more apparent when you're able to identify these six categories. So that's our component number one. So let me kind of back up and talk about how this this relates to your overall framework. And tomorrow and the next day, I'm gonna have other videos that are gonna go into the other parts of the framework. So again, we've got six categories of social impairment. That's what we talked about today. But when you think about your overall intervention plan for social language and pragmatics, you've got three pieces that you need. You've got your roadmap, you've got your explicit teaching component, and then you've got your practice component. So all three of those things need to be there in order for you to help your students be successful. The six categories of social impairment falls under component number one, which is your roadmap. Essentially, those six categories are your roadmap that will guide you to the right place so that you know how to um, explicitly teach and then provide opportunities for practice. But we'll get into those other two tomorrow or actually we'll get into the second one tomorrow and then the third one the next day. So what I wanted to share now is that I am able to share free information like this because I do offer paid programs via my website that will 
help you take this information to that next level and actually implement it, give you a complete treatment plan for your therapy. So for students with pragmatic language, if you have ever struggled and felt like you just don't have a framework for this type of intervention, if you're sick of seeing your students struggle, and if you're not quite sure, if you're picking the right techniques, if you're giving them the right practice, all of those things, I actually have a program for you. So it's called the Social Language Roadmap. And what I do is I dive deep into that framework that I talked about today. So I talk about those six categories of social impairment and how to take it to the next step and write goals for your therapy and then figure out how to pick the right interventions that will fit under those goals based on the six categories of social impairment or based on the area that your student needs work. And then I will talk about logistically how to do those things like explicit teaching and practice, how to work it into your schedule, even if you've got a huge caseload. So the social language roadmap came out last year and it's still available for the introductory rate. Um, I'm actually going to be doubling the tuition later because I've actually recently added content and I've doubled the amount of content and value in the program. But you still have the chance to get in now before the tuition goes up later this fall. Again, it's called the Social Language Roadmap, and it's going to take all of this information that I shared with you today a step further so that you can help your students to have happy, healthy, functional relationships, to set them up for success so that they are happy in their academic environment and then eventually can grow up to have those skills that will allow them to be functioning adults with well-adjusted relationships and happy lives. So I'm going to share that link with you again. It's called the Social Language Roadmap. There's still time to get in on that introductory rate. So if you are struggling with pragmatic language therapy and you want to finally have a roadmap that's going to show you exactly what to do and do it in a way that works for your situation, even if you have a huge caseload, then join me in the Social Language Roadmap today. So I'm gonna share it below this video and you can get information about how to enroll while there's still time to get in on that, that early tuition rate. So thanks everybody for watching and stay tuned for tomorrow's video about the second component, which is explicit teaching.